Kevin, almost 600 million bucks for two apps. Yeah. Apps that don't make any money yet. Are you jumping the shark, brother? What are you doing? Um, first of all, we, we think there's an enormous opportunity in wearables in general. The energy around it is something that is um, as big as we've seen, coming fresh back off of CES, you just see the amount of energy and excitement around it. But the one thing we notice is that no one is around community, the investment community. We started this journey of making these acquisitions more than a year ago with the acquisition of Map My Fitness in December 2013. And what we learned with the leadership of Robin Thurston and our team there um, was that the things that we loved was the community, the things that we didn't have was we didn't have nutrition and we didn't have a global perspective. So by buying Endo Mondo based in Copenhagen, by buying MyFitnessPal based in San Francisco, gives us an anchor in San Francisco, gives us an anchor in Europe, really that pan-global view, as well as we can aggregate the largest, the world's largest digital fitness and health community in absolutely bar none, 120 million registered users. How does that translate into you selling product? Right. So the thing that we looked at is, is the one thing that we know is the more that someone exercises, the more that they work out, the more, the more athletic apparel, the more athletic footwear they're going to buy. Last month alone, we had over 100 million workouts logged into one of our four applications between MyFitnessPal, Endomando, MapMyFitness, and UA Record, which we launched last week at uh, last month at CES. But no one's paying to log those. No one's making no, money. They, look, there's, what, we, what we want people to be understanding is that we want to drive value. So monetization, everybody says it. Look, there's an there's a advertising model these guys have in place right now, whether that's the right place for them to be or not. Um, we don't know what it is yet, so I don't think advertising is going to be a place we'll drive. Uh, there's a subscription model that's available. There's the ability for us just to push content. Last year, we had an ad with, with Misty Copeland and Giselle. We had 13 million YouTube views, and it was extraordinary, the reaction, I think, what it did for our women's business. We have 120 million registered users, 72 million of which are women. The ability for us to push content in the right way to speak to the athlete. And again, the more that they exercise, and we know who is exercising, because they're voluntarily giving us this data to help make them better, synthesize it, make it easier, that's what we do. Does that mean you're becoming a media slash content company like what GoPro wants to do? I, you know, look, our, our goal with all these acquisitions was to sell more shirts and shoes. That is our core business. And so everything we do must come back to the core. So ultimately, we think that if we can help athletes, help, help humans, help everyone find ways and make it easy for them to understand the information they're doing and to track their progress of how they're getting better, we think that they're going to buy ultimately more shirts and shoes. Then are you getting out of the team sport business and into this yeah. health, wellness lifestyle? Yeah, no, but I, I think it's... We're never going to depart sports. So everything we do, when we think about record, and again, our five growth drivers since we went public in 2005, men's apparel, women's apparel, footwear, international, direct consumer. So right now, it hits on all five of our growth drivers. So for men, you know, there's a 16-year-old high school linebacker right now who's measuring themselves in the door jam of their, high, of their bedroom and saying, did I get an inch taller this year or not? To have quantifiable data about making that athlete better. For women's, as I mentioned, the 70-some-odd million women that we have on the app right now. For our footwear business, there are people that log in to Map My Fitness, and they're tracking their footwear as to how many miles they put, the duration of the shoe they have. Our international business, we have 52 million people outside of North America that now have their first handshake with Under Armour is going to be in this digital capacity. But are you changing your strategy? The last time you and I spoke, you had just missed out yeah. on Kevin Durant. That was a $300 million yeah. price tag. Now you spent 560. Yeah. Was this a better move? Do you not want to pay for athletes anymore? Stephanie, we're constantly changing our strategy. We're constantly updating what we're doing, but we have core principles that drive the things that make us money. Selling more shirts and shoes. We viewed this as the ability for us to sell a lot more shirts and shoes, and more importantly, to make athletes better. There's this white space, and, and I got to go back to when, you know, when I when when I was a 22 year old kid sitting there graduating from school and saying, there's this idea of that. Why do we wear a short sleeve cotton t-shirt in the summer and a long sleeve cotton t-shirt in the winter? No one had ever addressed it before, and my reaction was, it was this white space that said, how come no one is making this? And so I went out and just went and took some, t some material, made a couple of stretchy t-shirts, tried them on my friends, and we created this whole new category. This to me was one of those moments. It was one of those moments that I look and say, I understand that there's, here's the next great device and here's Jawbone and here's Fitbit, here's the new Apple Watch that's coming out. But no one had addressed what is the community and who's synthesizing that information and making it easy. Then are you getting out of your old category is my question because Nike and Adidas was who you were focused on and we just yeah. heard from the Adidas CEO, they could sign between five and 500 athletes. Yes. Well, spending what more are you going to do, just chase one another to pay more money? Spending more money is no strategy, right? And we're not going to compete with our dumbest competitor either. So they will, chase, they will chase the old. they will chase the old model, 
And, and we've got good competitors in our space, but we also see some things that are a bit irrational from the way we say. So chasing and, and bidding someone up is not the goal. The race to the bottom is not the goal that we have. So we think that in, in order to spend our money, you'll still see us go after the right assets, the appropriate assets. And we'll spend to get those assets. But then you'll also see us take a different approach, which we think this is. This is a different voice, a different communication, a different handshake with the Under Armour consumer. But is Adidas your dumbest competitor? Uh, specifically, I, I don't mind you quoting me. I, I didn't say it, but... I don't like them. No, no, I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like the other guys either, but that's my job. But are those guys now your competition? Or is your competition Google, yeah. Apple? I mean, now yeah. setting your site in the tech world, yeah. brother, you're in a very different place. Your background isn't technology. Yeah. It is shirts and shoes. You're a football player, right. not an app guy. But let me give you the good news is that we're not competing with Apple. We're not competing with Samsung. Is that this is not iOS specific. It's not Android specific. We're with everybody. What I loved about Map My Fitness when we bought these guys back in December and what we learned was that they were, they were completely agnostic. We work with over 400 different devices. So whether you are Jawbone or Fitbit or Garmin or Sunto, whatever the device you have, it will plug in and work with the Under Armour Record platform and it already works with Map My Fitness or My Fitness Pal or Endomondo. This open platform is where we are setting the marks for our 120 million that added 4.2 million people, new registrants in the month of January alone, in 31 days of January, we average 136,000 people every single day signing up and joining our app. I mean, this scale is extraordinary. And do the math on what that could be, extrapolate the numbers out. We have the largest athletic fitness community in the world today, and it's only going to get bigger. You mentioned a race to the bottom. It makes me think of conversations I've had with Mickey Drexler, where he says that's what the retail landscape is right now. Do you agree? Um, I think it's tough. I mean, coming off of Black Friday where, you know, competition or discounting is the definition of everything. You know, we're a full price brand. We've always been a full price brand. And uh, our ambition is not to, you know, sell at 10, 20 or 30 off. So they're but seeing that more But how do you avoid it at this point? Customers are addicted to it. Well, they are, but we haven't, our customer is not trained for discount. I think that's what's happening, happening at retail or people are getting trained to walking in. And unless you see 30 off, 40 off, and you're walking by some of these retailers, Abercrombie, and you see 50 off in the door and saying, how do you compete with that? So it makes us, it helps us, and, and it reminds us why we need statement retail. It reminds us, number one, that we can demonstrate for our accounts of what we could look like, how good we can look in their stores, and what, how they should be utilizing the Under Armour brand. But we are not a discount brand. We are, we are a, a technology company. We are an innovation company. When you come to Under Armour, you're not buying the basic dumb, dumb, you know, $10 T-shirt. You're buying, you're spending money because it is that good. How about the challenges you can't avoid, the foreign exchange issues you face? As the U.S. dollar grows stronger, you're a victim. What can you do to protect yourself, especially now that you really care about the international market with your Endomondo acquisition? Well, it's, it's one of the difficulties we have with a company is about 9% of our revenues outside the United States. And again, our definition, our goal that we have as a company is to be a global company, which means that more than half our revenues would someday come from outside of our home country. We're a ways away from that happening. And frankly, because of the way the tax laws are set up, we're frankly disincentivized to do that because we have to go find and create international products. Profits. Our effective tax rate just a few years ago was over 42%. So when we look at it, we think that, hey, we're driving global revenues. And again, for a company that has, you know, uh, Europe cost across $130 million for the first time. We opened our 57th store in China this year. You know, really getting behind and building a true global business. And our international business was up 96% as a whole. So we are going to be big and important on the global stage. And, you know, again, we're just getting started. All right. Congratulations, Kevin Plank. Thank you, Stephanie. Hopefully next time we sit down, I'll have beat you on record. Let's do it. Let's do it.